intern, good morning, good morning, good morning, and I have very, very good news. So you know how we are getting ready to work on our beautiful reef park, which I am so excited about. And today, I'm really hoping we can kind of work on this waterfall area, and it's not terribly big, so I know that you wanted walruses and seals and dolphins and things like that, but we're going to put turtles and some coast birds, like have a little, little coast bird area where they can hide in this nice little grass over here, and then we probably will have a bunch of little fish swimming around, but on the note of fish intern, I have fantastic news. So Ben got word that we were going to be working on our reef zoo, and he managed to send over permission slips for us to get several, several new reef fish, like so many new reef fish. There's so many eastern blue devil fish. There's this beautiful, look at this, a fire goby, oh, fire goby is so pretty. Yellow tails, oh my gosh, there's butterfly fish. There's the red lion fish, look at how cool he looks. There's the tusk fish, basically, so many absolutely gorgeous parrotfish. The blue tang, oh my goodness, the purple queen. So many beautiful new creatures, the royal angelfish, for us to add into our waters. I just cannot wait to see all of these fish swimming around. We're going to have to make like nice tunnels where they can swim through. This is going to be absolutely fantastic. So let's go ahead and get started in turn. We surveyed the zoo and you guys have suggested so many fantastic ideas for what we are going to be adding in to our reef park. But we'll start nice and simple just to kind of get the, the zoo established. So for our coral reef zoo, this is going to be where we're going to have a few of the fish swimming around, maybe a ray or two, and we'll put in some turtles because those are always very popular. So we'll add in some turtles, um, potentially. I mean, there's the flatback turtle, there's the olive ridley turtle, and this is very much a reef area. So I think we're going to go with the olives because I know that they are actually a uh, pretty endangered species. Oh, and look at them. Oh, it's so cute. So cute. So first things first, let's figure out how we're going to surround the area so that the animals are safely contained. Hmm. And I know I want to do kind of like a little, like this is going to be... A big area that we'll have for the coastal birds and I want to do like a little observation bridge over here that people can come up and kind of stand on to look in and see everything swim below them so that'll be a lot of fun so let's see how we're gonna build this with maybe a low stone wall of some kind Mm hmm that sounds like a good idea we just need to see if we are able to do a low stone wall yet oh there's a low stone wall here we're going to have to survey our options. So we've got this guy. Very, very normal looking. Very normal looking. We want to make sure we get something... Because there's like the low species endangered wall. But that's a little bit more tropical. Believe it or not, I will pass up on that one this time in turn. A little more tropical than what we're going for. Hmm. Now, there is like this little tribe fence thing. But it's not quite what we're going for. Then there's your classic zoo wall, the classic hedge, which I really do like, actually. You know what? I think we're going to go with that one for now. And we're going to use it to surround this area and give the animals somewhere safe that they can kind of chill out in. So let's go ahead. We're going to just surround this. I'm going to bring it in here. And we want to give the birds, like, a little bit, the birds and the turtles, so they have like places that they can lay their eggs. A little bit of space over there. Oh, and actually I just noticed the zoo wall won't let our guests see some of the areas. Oh, fudge knuckles. Well, can we swap it out? Is there a lower tribe's fence like this? Or yeah, like this with the glass. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so we'll swap it out in certain places with this. There we go. I like that. I actually like that a lot. Let's go ahead and figure out where we want to put these pieces. Whoops before we add in the more expensive hedge though of course i would i would want to plant with plants that's totally me you know me in turn i just i can't resist it's plants plants as decorative pieces win always all right and let's go ahead and swap back to the zoo wall a little bit just kind of curve it up around here maybe yeah because i want to give the coastal birds like a nice big area that they can feel kind of like they've got a bit of privacy back here and then we'll swap back to the, the glass fencing so guests can see inside like oh look at all the birds jumping around being birds and then we're gonna come over here and we can kind of wrap this around there we go 
There we go. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. Oh, I hope this exhibit will be big enough. It's a pretty darn big exhibit, so it's going to be a nice big multi-species exhibit. Aren't you excited about that intern? We're going to have as many fish species and a couple turtle species. Like I said, we might try to put in a few rays. And we'll do this. There we go. So it's nice and enclosed. Just as we need it so that we can start adding animals. Then let's go ahead. I want to put some fencing down. Oh, look at the pretty fence. Oh my gosh, that's so gorgeous. A plus gorgeousness. Should I put it there? Hmm. Maybe over here behind this tree. And then we'll do another one over here. Another one right there. Another one over here. So the zookeepers have lots of different spots that they can get in and out of. And then we're going to go ahead and build this observation platform now, because it's going to be sad, isn't it, intern? If it's anything like my struggles with, with the usual, it's going to be kind of sad. So let's go ahead and we want to put a nice little observation platform out here. Mm hmm So far, so good. So far, so good. We're going to fill it in so we can add benches and uh, little binoculars and whatnot. And then can I make it go like this? There we go. <gasps> it's not too bad. Not too bad. Oh my goodness. And then we want it to come like straight down like that. And once again, straight down like that. <gasps> Did I do it? Oh my gosh, look, we shoved that tree down into nowhere land. That's hilarious. Get over here, tree. You're okay. Oh man, we almost had it. And then like the ground messed up at the last second. What are you doing, ground? Why? All right, intern, get out the shovel. Get out the shovel. And we're going to flatten the spot. Okay. Much better. But it's still not correct for <laughs> for being a good a good little bridge. I don't think anyone can get up and down that. There, now people can get up and down that one. And they can get up and down that one. <gasps> we did it! It's not the most attractive little observation area in the world just yet. You know, I wonder actually... No, because we need to leave room. As, as cool as it would be to be able to look down, is there one that... Oh! Oh, man! Can we swap that? <gasps> Look at that! Look at that, intern! That would be so cool if we could keep all of that grass, like glass, but I don't think we can. Because I don't think... Yeah, we can't remove the fencing. Man, that would be really cool if we could make it so that like, you can walk out on the little glass piece. But it, it looks like that's just for roofing. Which makes sense. Like, here's concrete elevated path. This is a glass elevated path, though. <gasps> is it going to do it? No, it's not going to do it. That would have been really cool, though. What about this? Like, this little canopy? Does that count? Nope. Nope. I guess you can't mix the two, the two types. Well, that's okay. We'll keep the idea of doing... Oh, my. Well, now we have a mess. Oh, dear. <laughs> what is going on down here? What do you think you're doing down here? bridge what's going on huh oh dear i knew that was too easy of course it would be too easy <laughs> of course it had to be more complicated than that huh all right let's go ahead come here oh i see what our problem is we're building with the freaking like go down button and that's not going to help anything all right there we go there we go intern like I have told you many times before, you had no idea that studying proper architecture would be one of the most important things you could do to build properly in the zoo, now did you? Alright, so now we've got this little area enclosed, and we've got our little observation platform. So let's go ahead and make a little path. Um, and I'm kind of thinking this amethyst path would be really nice here. What do you think, intern? Amethyst path, or should we go for old Atlantean? The Old Atlantean looks kind of messy, but it does make everything pop. Or should we just go with a nice beach path? Oh, that's adorable. Why are you so adorable? Look at it. It has, it has the... Oh, that's just... Okay, we're going to have to... Beach path. I think the answer is beach path, in turn. Compared to sand path? Oh, yeah. We're, we're just going to go with beach path. We're going all the way. There we go. There we go. Let's move the little tree. Tree's in the way. There you go, little tree. Provide some shade to our wonderful guests. So this will be where they have their little viewing area. Let's go ahead and add some sand. And right there, okay. Then we're gonna move another tree. Tree, you guys are in the way. That brings back memories of moving all the trees that we used to move. <laughs> oh, 
do you remember that intern? All those trees we used to move all the time when we were still in our dino zoo, our very first dino park. All right, then we're gonna come along here. There we go. So we've got a little path, a little path started, and it's gonna connect up to this path right here. And we'll make it connect up like this, so it's a nice big path. Keeps leading on. Uh, should we exchange? We should probably go ahead because you're you're coming into our ocean park now. No tarmac. See, sand would like sand would stay warm, but I have a feeling it wouldn't keep the heat as horrible as tarmac does. Did you know, intern, that they've done a study that walking your dogs on really hot days on tarmac can cause your dog's paw pads to get burned and uh, really painful, really painful. Like you, you need to make sure they have little shoes or you just walk them on the grass instead because it can be so painful to walk them on the tarmac and you have shoes on so you don't feel how hot it is, but they do. Their paw pads are very, very sensitive. So there's, there's a fact for the day in turn to keep you aware of how to take very good care of your puppy. There we go. We'll put that tree over there. This is exciting. There's something so formal and awesome about putting path down because then you know that we're getting started. All right, we're gonna come over here and we'll put a little viewing area over here as well because from these paths, we'll be able to branch off and start putting down multiple exhibits everywhere. And we're gonna be building a lot of aquatic exhibits. I, that's the whole point of, of coming to our wonderful coral reef zoo. So we're gonna be building a lot of aquariums in turn. I hope you're ready for that. All right, and then maybe a couple right there. There we go, make it nice and even. <gasps> Ta-da! It's already looking great. All right, so let's turn our attention. We'll focus on the guests when they start arriving. Let's turn our attention to the Olive Ridley turtle, which is a reef-based turtle, so it should have a good time in here. It wants to eat seaweed, so let's put down a bunch of seaweed for it. All over the place. Seaweed for the turtle everywhere. There we go. How fun. And all of Ridley's, I think, are actually... I have a home in North Carolina, intern. I don't know if you know this, but I think that they're actually kind of common out there. Because there's... Oh, and another fun fact, intern. Did you know you can look at the drag marks that a turtle has made as it walks up out of the ocean, and you can determine what kind of sea turtle walked up out of the ocean based off of how big the drag marks are and how uh, their fins hit the sand in a certain pattern. So you can look at those patterns to determine what sea turtle has crawled out of the sea, dragged herself across the sand, and made a nest. So you can try to follow the, the track find where she made her nest, and then by looking at the drag marks, you can tell, oh, this is an Olive Ridley, or oh, this is a green sea turtle. And then that helps you if you happen to be a biologist or just a curious bystander who wants to note what eggs might be inside of that nest after that point. So very, very helpful. Misty spring, huh? <laughs> Let's go with the clam bubble. Let's put some research into the clam bubble. Misty spring, I guess I could pull that off back here. So we'll go ahead, because I could see the point in having that. It's kind of like a little waterfall. I wish there were more waterfall options. I really do. All right. And she wants some little, little dwarf numpukas, or however you pronounce that. It sounds adorable. All right. And they are, they are plants that we can kind of have lead up and out of the water. All right. And remember, intern, if you are ever working on building your zoo without me, on the day where one day you might go forward, fly away from my my loving grasp as your your tutor, your mentor. Uh, remember to always look away. So we put down some some like water objects in the water, right? You want to go far, far away from said water objects and spend a minute staring at something else until the water settles down. Because sometimes if you put down a lot of stuff in the water and the splashy splash gets too intense, you will get knocked out and you'll lose any progress that you may have done in the zoo that day. So that is a very important tip. And that's also why we look away so the water splashes don't show up. Oh, look at these. These are actually really nice ground cover. I love the variety of green shades they come in. That's fantastic. And I love we can kind of gently have them lead up and out of the water. So let's do that. Cover this little spot with them, because why not? 
I'm so excited. We're going to have so many awesome animals in here. Yeah, it's getting rid of all my sand. I'm going to have to put more sand back down after this. There we go. There we go. I'm going to make this area kind of nice and layered. And hopefully that will give them somewhere to, to kind of like enjoy the walk, enjoy feeling like they've got somewhere to hide. They don't really need, at least we can't see. Oh, they do need a shelter. All right, let's do a little kelp bed. Let's do a little kelp bed. Where should we do a little kelp bed? Can I do a kelp bed over here? Would they sleep in one that was over here? Let's put it a little bit. Well, let's put one over here. And let's put one like a little bit in the deeper water right here. And then one more kind of right there to make nice little kelp shelters for them. All right, and we are researching their clam bubbler. We've got the one of the plants down. Now we're going to put down some giant barrel, barrel sponges. I almost said giant barrel cactus. No, in turn, we're not sticking cactus into our reef. I, I don't think it's going to work like that. Nope. And there's also feather stars, which come in so many colors. This is going to be one of the most colorful exhibits, most colorful zoos we've ever had the opportunity to work on, in turn. I'm really looking forward to this. All right, feather stars. I'm just going to sprinkle you guys in a few places. There we go. There we go. Feather star here. Feather star there. And don't worry, intern, as time goes on, we will have access to more amazing reef additions that we can put in here so that it's not quite as sparse as it is. Because a reef is really going to be covered in coral. It's going to be covered in so many beautiful specimens. And we will add to it as time goes on. All right. So we've got that. We've got the food. We're working on the enrichment. We've got the shelter. Uh, let's see, we've got, ooh, look at that little reef plant. Little reef rock, reef rock. Very important to add some reef rocks. That's what I mean. You get these really nice coral reef, like, constructions. There we go. Oh, so nice. And then, can I stick one over here? It's a little bit too shallow over here, so we'll have to hand build when we get down here. No problem. And then there's small little reef rocks. Just to kind of add a little dash. Uh, let's see, you can mix it in with some of the, the little feathers, that the feather stars that we put in. There we go. So that is what the Olive Ridley needs. Um, I think I'm going to put, we're going to go ahead and put like a tree fern over here. I think like a couple of them. So it can feel like a nice little, nice little island, nice little shaded island they can come and hang out at. And that's exciting. So we've got the Olive Ridleys and we're going to be putting down a few of them in just a minute. And what else do we want to stick in here? Well, a whole bunch of the fish, like royal angelfish. If we put those in here, what do they need? No food, no enrichment, and just the basics, because they'll they'll basically eat what's innate inside of our little reef that we've made. Ooh, so this is very exciting. All right, all right, let's get started. You ready for this? All right, so let's grab the olive ridley, and let's put them over here, I think. So let's do... Um, Three females and two males. They are an endangered species, but they do breed pretty quick. So let's do two females, one male, and see how they how they play out. All right, so there you go, guys. Oh, let's get away from the water. Remember what I said about splashy splashy in turn. Oh, oh, oh! Wait for it. Wait for it. Listen to the seagulls. All right, and I think it's safe. Let's go back. Okay, is it safe? Uh, yes, it's safe. All right, oops, and I just noticed we've got... Oh, actually, that's kind of cute with the little sea stars poking in on the other side. <gasps> Look at them! Oh my goodness, hello, everyone! We're going to have to have names, intern names, 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 names for our turtles. Names for our olive ridley turtles, please come up with them in copious amounts because if they breed anything like our past sea turtles do oh <gasps> intern it's so pretty oh my goodness oh my goodness oh my goodness and we've got the clam bubbler already oh my gosh it is way pretty down here oops yeah be very very careful intern those splashies Ooh, yeah we really don't want to do that again <laughs> those splashies are dangerous all right, let's dive back under. Oh my gosh, and we can swim with them. Oh my goodness. Oh, 
and turn my heart. My heart. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, we're not in for Jeep tours right now. Sorry about that. Oh dear, we haven't even opened. We haven't even officially opened the zoo yet. Oh, she's pretty. Where are you going, sweetie? Oh, 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 she's on the move. She's on the move. Oh my gosh. 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 Wow. Oh wow. This is- oh, I didn't mean to swim with you. Sorry, sweetheart. Oh, intern. I'm speechless because it's so pretty. Oh, we're gonna love this. I can just tell we really are. Oh my goodness. Alright, intern. Well, we're gonna give them a minute, because it's late in the evening now, to kind of settle in and figure out how they feel about the reef area, if they can- Oh, they're happy! I see happy faces! And we're going to see- uh, Oh, and the Misty Spring is done. Let's go ahead. We can tuck the Misty Spring kind of back here. So if nothing else, it's kind of providing uh, a little bit a little bit of extra humidity or whatever they need for this area. So can I scoot that back just a little bit more, maybe? Yeah, we'll put it right there. There we go. But yeah, we're going to let them, oh, there they go, settle in a little bit. And then in the morning, we will release quite a few fish, maybe a couple manta rays in here. And then we'll start inviting the guests in so that they can see how everybody's doing in our new reef zoo. So I will see you in the morning, intern. Bye-bye.